anything, but we also try not to hoard. There's a really important thing, and it's become kind of a point of conversation throughout recent um, decades about hoarders. And I think it's important to kind of examine all the time what our reasoning is, and, and reason out everything, um, not to the point where you're um, you know, stuck in a rut with that, but I, my thought is that if you're, you're, you're saving wood that would be thrown away that you could probably use, you know, you're pretty used to your habits of what kinds of things you need, then by all means, save it. But if you're saving it, wait, let me just think really hard what this could be. We can all discuss this too in our um, communication together. If you're saving it, um, because you are afraid. That's an important thing, that you won't have it when you need it. I, I have found that if it's something bulky or not probable that I would be using it in, in a soon time, um, and you're afraid that you'll never have it again, that's, that's, a, that's something to be careful about because you must never be afraid about supply. The idea of supply is that it's ever flowing. And the way we, we uh, kind of get into our supply um, is by opening up our eyes and staying in tune with what passes by us or what we pass by and saying, oh, that's just what I needed, you know? And it's so much more fun that way than having to feel this load of things that you're, that you're saving. And I mean, I struggle with that. I, I'm not, a, I, I don't, I don't like hoarding things, so I know that I'm not a hoarder. But I do, I do struggle because I, I want it to be, um, you know, to be for the right reasons and wise and not fearful, not fearfully based, but practical. And also, I'm constantly turning things into new uses. So I do. I don't just let things sit there and say, someday I'm going to fix that. But I really do try to stay on top of things. I'm mending all the time. I'm fixing and putting things back into service. So I, I feel pretty good about my reasoning. But it's just something to think about, to just, just have a little talk with oneself about um, why we are holding on to things. And sometimes that helps us to let loose. And, and it just helps us to stay crisp in our thought and free. And that's what we want. We don't want a sense of burden by having a lot of things for fear that we will have a day when we don't have them. And also, it's good um, if it's something that can be used, but also, you know, like on the streets of New York, <laughs> every day there's a treasure trove of, of things. But we don't have to be the one to save the world. We, we don't have to pick up every pair of shoes that fits us on the street or whatever it is. Um, just let go. And I, I learned this lesson when we had a car that had to be moved from one side of the street to the other every other day. It was the most beautiful thing because I could see that people, whilst I was on the other side for two hours, it's a good time to read and pray and study and do a lot of business work can be done whilst you're waiting for your car. It's not a waste of time at all. And, but once in a while, I'd glance across the street, and there would be a, a constant flow of cars or carts going by with people picking things up that, that could be used. And a lot of those people are not hoarders. They turn it into something that can be sold. Or they strip out the wires. Or, you know, I loved in China, when, when we used to work in China a lot, um, nothing went to waste. Nothing touched the ground. <laughs> there was no rubble and raised on the ground. People were constantly picking everything up and putting it into a special compartment in their wagon. And it, it was great. So that's terrific. I love that. That's, that's really great. Okay.